We now review again. This time we are ready to give more effort and more time to what we undertake. We are preparing for another phase of understanding. Let us take this step completely that we may go on again more certain, more sincere, with faith upheld more surely. Steady our feet, our Father. Let our doubts be quiet and our holy minds be still and speak to us. We have no words to give to you. We would but listen to your word and make it ours. Lead our practicing as does a father lead a little child along a way he does not understand. Yet does he follow, sure that he is safe because his father leads the way for him. So do we bring our practicing to you. And if we stumble, you will raise us up. If we forget the way, we count upon your sure remembering. We wander off, but you will not forget to call us back. Quicken our footsteps now that we may walk more certainly and more quickly unto you and we accept the word you offer us to unify our practicing as we review the thoughts that you have given us. God is but love, and therefore so am I. God is but love, and therefore so am I. All things are echoes of the voice for God. God is but love, and therefore so am I. The power of decision is my own. God is but love, and therefore so am I.
God is but love, and therefore so am I. All things are echoes of the voice for God. God is but love, and therefore so am I. The power of decision is my own. God is but love, and therefore so am I. God is but love, and therefore so am I. The introduction to this fifth review is a particularly beautiful one, being one of the very few places in the workbook where Jesus speaks directly to us in the first person. Let me start with something obvious but bare stating nonetheless. Jesus takes his reviews quite seriously, as we see not only here but throughout the workbook. Inherent in this attitude is his expectation that we take the workbook just as seriously. Here he discusses, as well in other places we will examine later, our weak dedication and how we need to work on strengthening it. He asks us to take seriously the meaning underlying the workbook lessons, wanting us to recognize our investment in the ego thought system, how stalwart we are in maintaining it, and how unhappy it makes us. Our seriousness is expressed in spending as much time as possible throughout the day, considering how often we choose against him and his forgiveness and for the ego's specialness. In what follows, therefore, Jesus reaffirms how resolute he wants us to be, because only then would we find happiness. He thus asks us to recognize our unhappiness which specifically comes from maintaining we are right and he is wrong. Try to keep that in mind. We now review again. This time we are ready to give more effort and more time to what we undertake. We see in this statement that Jesus wants us to spend quality time, not just clock hours, in thinking about his teachings. Indeed, our very salvation depends on it. We recognize we are preparing for another phase of understanding. A prevailing metaphor of this introduction, as indeed it is throughout A Course in Miracles, is a journey, reflecting the process of our learning. The year we spend in the workbook is a journey in and of itself, and Jesus is telling us now that we are ready for the next stage, another phase of understanding. And I am going to stop there. I love you. God is but love, and therefore so am I. I will read a bit of um, Ken's commentary on the review each day as we move through these lessons. And I'll just sort of dance around because it's pretty long, so I won't touch on the entire thing, but I will get a lot of it read. So thank you for joining with me. I love you. Have a beautiful day, and I will see you tomorrow.